Welcome to today's session on Netscope Advanced Analytics. My name is Elena Macchi, and I am part of the Netscope Sales Engineering team. Today, I will be talking to you about dimensions and measures and how to use them. For this exercise, we will start out in the Explore View Advanced Analytics, and we will be working with the Alerts Data Collection. The Alerts Data Collection represents alerts generated by all Netscope products. Let's take a look. Down here in the left-hand side, you will see alerts. When we expand the section, we will see dimensions listed. One way to think about dimensions is that they represent characteristics and attributes of our data. In this case, our dimensions listed here represent the characteristics and attributes of our alerts data. There are hundreds of dimensions available for you to use across the data collections in Netscope Advanced Analytics. For this reason, to make things easier to find, dimensions have been categorized in these sections you see listed below. So if you are looking for information about application information, you would expand the application area and you can see things like the application or the category. If you wanted to learn more about the meaning of these fields, you can also hover over the information or click on it to learn more about what this field is representing. Rather than using these sections, you could also search for a field that you are looking for. Let's search for the category field. Here it is. From here, we can choose to add it into our data view or filter on it. Let's take a closer look at some of the dimensions we will be using in today's session. Over in the application section, we have application category. When we click on it, it gets populated into the data section on the right hand side. Let's run this and see what values appear. Here in the resulting pane, we see all of the application categories that have alerts in this environment. One important thing to think about as you look at the data in Netscope Advanced Analytics is that context and nuance are very important. For keen observers, you may have noticed that there is a null value appearing here at the top for application category. What does that mean? The key to think about here is that we have asked to list application categories, but alerts are not only generated for applications, they are also generated for web traffic. When there is web traffic, there is no application category and there is no application name, so those fields will be populated with null, and as a result, we get a null field. Now let's look at another dimension. Let's look at application. We'll deselect category and we'll select application and we'll hit run. Here are all of our applications which have generated alerts. Let's look at one more dimension. Let us look at policy. I'm going to select policy name. And I'm also going to deselect application. Once again, you see all of the policies in this environment that have generated alerts. Now let's talk about measures. Scrolling down to the bottom beneath the dimensions, you will see a measure section. The measures are easily distinguishable because they're in a different color. They're in an orange color. And of course, there is a title here with measures. So what are measures? Measures are anything you can quantify, or as the name implies, anything you can measure. You can see things at, like number of alerts, sessions, users, objects, and many more. Let's take a look at a few in detail. I'm going to clear out my data space. 
And let's take a look at the number of applications. I'm going to click Run. Here we are. There are 108 applications that have generated alerts in this environment over the last seven days. Let's look at another. Let's look at the number of alerts. Here we have the number of alerts. There are 41,000 alerts that have been generated in this environment for these 108 applications. Finally, let's take a look at the number of users. And once again, here is another measure where we are seeing the number of users who have generated alerts in this environment. It happens to be 137. Now that we have looked at dimensions and measures separately, let's combine these two concepts and start to answer some interesting questions. Let's say I wanted to learn about the various application categories in my environment and how many applications of each category I have. Let's start out by clearing all the information out of the data view by selecting the gear and removing fields and filters. So once again, we are trying to understand application categories and how many applications of each category type we have. Let's start out by adding our dimension of application category. Here is our application section. Here is our category. I will click on it and it will appear in my data view. And I also want to get the number of applications of each category. So scrolling down further into the measure section, I will select the number of applications. One thing to remember, as I mentioned before, is that the data is nuanced and context is key. For this information, we know that alerts includes both applications and web traffic. So we will apply a filter to make sure that we are only looking at applications. We're going to select application category. And instead of clicking on it, since it's already in our data view, I'm going to click on the filter icon. And in here, I'm going to say is not null. Let's run this and see what we get. Here we are. Now we see our application categories on the side and we see the number of applications in each category on the right-hand side. We can see from the top that collaboration is our top category with 20 unique applications. Now let's do another example. Let's say we wanted to find out what are our top 10 applications when we are looking at the number of users using those applications. Let's clear our space. And once again, we want to understand what are the most used applications. So we will look at our applications and the number of users using those applications. This time around, we will select application, representing the name of our application. And in the measure section, we will select the number of users. Once again, we want to be sure to filter out applications for null values because that represents the web traffic. This time I'm going to filter using this method by clicking the gear button and selecting filter, which moves the application field into our filters. And now once again, we can say is not null. Let's run this and see what we get. Here are our results. There's a lot of information here. Perhaps I'm just interested in the top 10 applications with users. So I can go up here to the row limit section and limit my results. Let's try and run this again. 
As you can see, we ended up with the top 10 applications by user count. One thing to keep in mind here is this warning message that says role limit reached results may be incomplete which indicates to us that there are more results, but since we are limiting our results to 10, we don't see the rest of them. Now we can take this data and visualize it. We could look at it as a bar chart in various ways. I think this one looks nice. Let's do a final example. This time, let's take a look at our top 15 policies with alerts. To do this, we will first select the policy information. And I will do that by typing policy and selecting policy name. For my measure, I'm interested in finding out how many alerts each policy is generating. So in the measures section, I will select alerts. Once again, context and nuance are important to consider. When we think about alerts, we have to remember that alerts are not just generated by policies. And so with that, to make sure that our data is relevant, we will filter the data on alert type. Here I'm selecting the filter button. And what I want to ensure is that we are looking at alerts tied to policies. At this point, we are ready to run. I'm going to collapse the filters and I'm going to click the run button. Here we are. We have all of our policies by the number of alerts they are generating. And we can start to see our most highly trafficked policies and ones that are not getting as many hits. At this point, we may choose to limit our data and visualize it. Let's take a look at our top 10 policies. Here we have our top 10 policies at the bottom and our visualization. This concludes today's session. Be sure to check out the other advanced analytics topics in this series.